Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and today I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, Normally, I talk about two or three books uh, by different authors in a podcast, and today, instead of doing that, I want to focus on just one author, and that author is Debbie McComer. And as I've said this before, and you know I always worry about mispronouncing people's names, I I don't know if they're ever going to listen to a, this one of my podcasts and if they're ever going to be offended that I've mispronounced their names, but I always worry. I always even try to look up before I do a podcast on how authors' names are pronounced. I have actually heard Ms. McComer's last name pronounced as McComer, as I tend to think of it in my head, and Maycomer. Um, I think one person even pronounced it Maycomer. So I apologize to you if you know how to pronounce her last name and I'm doing it incorrectly and it's driving you crazy. I apologize to the author if she should ever, ever, ever listen to my podcast and be like, well, that's not how you say my name. You know, I always worry about these things. So I talked a while back about how I choose books and how I have trouble just going online, like um, at Amazon or uh, books, you know, any any book site or my library card catalog. It's not a card catalog. See, I'm just aging myself. You know, when you look online to look up a book, I have trouble finding books just by going in. But I do have a series of set authors that I always go to as um, kind of my, well, they're my go-to authors. When I'm looking for a book, I always look to see if they have anything new out and if I can read that. And Debbie McComer is one of those authors. I started reading her because of my mom who was had been reading her and had some of her books at the house. And so I don't even remember how long ago it was that I picked up the first one, but I started reading it. And so now my mom and I share the the books back and forth and let each other know when there's a new one coming out. We talk about them. And for me, Debbie McComer is a little bit like she's the book version of comfort food. And I don't mean that to be condescending. I don't mean that to be any kind of backhanded compliment. I just know that when I read her books, they are going to uh, be they're going to be heartwarming. They are going to be true to her way of writing. They are going to have a happy ending, even though the characters will uh, all usually go through some things. And they will be, I just know that I will be able to read it. I will enjoy it. Whether or not it's my favorite book on the planet, I know I'm going to enjoy it. I know that I will just, you know, read straight through and enjoy the characters. So she's my, she's she's one of my book versions of comfort food. And I have several authors that fall into that category. And again, I don't mean that to be condescending in any way, shape or form. I think we all need to have those authors that we just know we can pick up their book. We're going to, we kind of know what to expect. It's not going to be something that's going to give us nightmares unless you like you know, those authors could be your comfort food. I'm not judging. Um, But the authors that you just, you know what to expect. And she is one of those for me. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is one of her more recent books. It actually came out in February of 2016. So a little over a year ago, it's um, called A Girl's Guide to Moving On. And the two main characters in the book, Nicole and Leanne, I want to talk about uh, Nicole first just a little bit because this is a standalone novel, but Nicole, who is one of the main characters, we actually have met her before in another one of uh, Ms. McComer's standalone novels called Last One Home. Last One Home was about a woman named Cassie, and Nicole happens to be Cassie's sister. So we meet Nicole in this other book, and she's in there a little bit. She's not a main character, but we encounter her. And we actually encounter her in the events that lead up to this book, where she finds out that her husband has been cheating on her and she makes the decision to leave him and try to start a new life, to start life over after she finds out that her husband has been cheating on her for pretty much their entire marriage. 
So the book that we are talking about, this I don't know that you'd call it a spin-off. I guess you could, but it does have some of the same characters in it. A Girl's Guide to Moving On is actually about Nicole and her mother-in-law, Lee Ann, which is interesting. Lee Ann ends up divorcing her husband at the same time that Nicole divorces um, her husband, who is the son of Lee Ann and Sean. And it's their journey together. They are good friends, and both of their husbands have cheated on them. In fact, that is... Nicole's husband Jake has had that model from his his father as to you know his his mother turned a blind eye for a long time and so he just thought that it was an acceptable thing to do in your marriage even though he loved his wife he just didn't really think of it as anything that was a problem so here is the description of the book when Nicole discovers that her husband Jake has been unfaithful the illusion of her perfect life is indelibly shattered while juggling her young son, a new job, and volunteer work, Nicole meets Rocco, who is the opposite of Jake in nearly every way. Though blunt-spoken and rough around the edges, Rocco proves to be a dedicated father and thoughtful friend. But just as their relationship begins to blossom, Jake wagers everything on winning Nicole back, including their son Owen's happiness. Somehow, Nicole must find the courage to defy her fears and follow her heart, with far-reaching consequences for them all. Leanne has quietly ignored her husband's cheating for decades, but is jolted into action by the echo of Nicole's all-too-familiar crisis. While volunteering as a teacher of English as a second language, Leanne meets Nikolai, a charming, talented baker from Ukraine. Resolved to avoid the heartache and complications of romantic entanglements, Leanne nonetheless finds it difficult to resist Nikolai's effusive overtures until an unexpected tragedy sets the very fabric of her tests the very fabric of her commitments. An inspiring novel of friendship, reinvention, and hope, A Girl's Guide to Moving On affirms the ability of every woman to forge a new path, believe in love, and fearlessly find happiness. So that is that description. And as after they have both left their husbands, they end up getting apartments across the hall from each other. And it's, it's an interesting dynamic because it's not often that the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law would become friends after a situation like this. But you do get that relationship between them. Nicole's parents are both dead. So um, Leanne has been a mother to her for quite some time. So they come up with this list of rules that will guide them through this new transition in their life. And... It, if you read the title, A Girl's Guide to Moving On, you kind of think it's going to be, you know, a little bit like a handbook that's going to tell you or that's going to walk through how they do this. Instead, you get at the beginning those rules that they have come up with or those guidelines that they have come up with, which are don't allow yourself to wallow in your pain, cultivate new friendships, let go in order to receive and love yourself. And you just... that you see them living those out as they go through their transitions. It's not like sort of shoved in your face. These are the guidelines. This is what this book is about. You just know that they, they talk about them some, but it's not really the focus of the book. It just sort of forms their relationships and their paths as they continue on. As with um, any novel, the, the road is not smooth. They both encounter bumps and they encounter setbacks in their relationship, but they do their their journeys mirror one another. So just like they move across the hall from each other in apartments, in apartments that are across the hall from each other, their journeys tend to mirror one another. They both meet new men who are very, very different from their husbands. They both uh, work to you know, figure out what those relationships are going to look like if they even are ready for a new relationship, if they um, want this relationship with this man who is so very different from their previous relationship, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a novel about breaking up divorce, which is, a, you know, can be a very sensitive subject. It's a novel about co-parenting as Jake and Nicole try to figure out how to raise their son together, but not living together. It's a novel about friendship and the friendship that we see developing between Leanne and Nicole, not developing, it's already there, but that it develops further as they, they go through these journeys together. They experience a lot of different things and work through those together as well as on their own. I liked um, the relationship between Nicole and Rocco a little bit better than the relationship between Leanne and Nikolai. Um, Nikolai, as a character, I didn't quite know. 
he made me a little bit uncomfortable and I think it was because he is this older gentleman who has is very set in his ways he's got some um, more old-fashioned ideals and ideas and so he comes across as a little bit con not he comes across as jealous and sometimes controlling and that can be a little bit mm, off-putting for me at times but Overall, they have a very sweet relationship, and it's interesting to see how they work through these things, and maybe some parts of that relationship could have been a little bit better developed, but it works to, um, as the catalyst to move Leanne's life forward, and she finds herself, you know, experiencing new things and trying new things and, you know, making new friendships and meeting new people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, both she and Nicole do. So that is a very kind of overall picture of the book. I don't want to give everything away because you should read it for yourself. As I said, I always know what to expect from Debbie McComer. I know that her books will be heartwarming. Um, she often, her characters are almost always a people of faith, but it's never, it's never in your face as in, you know, this is what my characters believe, therefore you should believe it too. It's just, it's a part of their life. Like they have green eyes or they work at, uh, Nicole is a high school teacher, but you know, they also go to church and they, that gets thrown in there a little bit. Never, as I said, overpowering or in your face. It's just a part of their character and it helps to form who they are and how they make their decisions. So these are, um, I guess you could say wholesome is a good word for them. You know, you're not going to get a lot of, you know, there's not going to be a lot of crazy sex scenes or a lot of curse words. And this, you know, that type of book might not be to everyone's taste, but it does, it, it is to a lot of people's taste. And if so, if you are looking for a good novel that is heartwarming and tells of friendship and female relationships as well as male female relationships then I would highly recommend picking this book up you can read the other one first last one home the one about uh, Nicole's sister Cassie but you don't have to it's not you're not going to feel like you're lost if you read this one without having read the other one you can even read them in the opposite order I don't think it's going to bother you at all so that was a girl's guide to moving on and we are going to take our first break but when we come back we will Start, we will look at one of the series that Debbie McComer has written. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about the book Girl's Guide to Moving On by Debbie McComer. And this whole episode is dedicated to books by Ms. McComer. So we are moving on to one of the series that she has written. And that is the series, the, um, the Inn at Rose Harbor series. It is it's the Rose Harbor series. The first book is called The Inn at Rose Harbor. It's a five book series. The most recent one came out not so long ago. Um, it is actually a spin-off of another series called Cedar Cove and I know that that has been made into a TV series I think on the Hallmark Channel starring Andy McDowell so there are those Cedar Cove books the Rose Harbor series takes place in the town of Cedar Cove so you get some of those same characters I haven't read the Cedar Cove books myself they are on my list of things to you know get to one of these days that list is huge and long and I'm sure you have a similar list of all those books that you want to read someday. So the Cedar, this is a spinoff of the Cedar Cove series. You don't have to read the Cedar Cove books to read the Rose Harbor books, but you certainly can if you want, because that just gives you more options to choose from. So this one is set in 
um, Cedar Cove, which is in the Seattle area, the Pacific Northwest. A lot of Ms. McComber's books are set in the Pacific Northwest, which for me, I grew up in Montana, so it's a little bit like being home, not quite, but uh, it's kind of my neighborhood. So I, that, I think that's another part of the reason that I like Ms. McComber's books is because they are set in, if not my neighborhood, then the neighborhood, the, you know, the next neighborhood over, which is nice. So the first book, the, Ro the Inn at Rose Harbor, gives us the beginning of this story, and it says, Jo Marie Rose first arrives in Cedar Cove seeking a fresh start. A young widow coping with the death of her husband, she purchases a local bed and breakfast, the newly christened Rose Harbor Inn, ready to begin her life anew. Her first guest is Joshua Weaver, who has come to care for his ailing stepfather. The two have never seen eye to eye, and Joshua has little hope that they can reconcile their differences. Jo Marie's other guest is Abby Kincaid, who has returned to Cedar Cove to attend her brother's wedding. Back for the first time in 20 years, she almost wishes she hadn't come, the picturesque town harboring painful memories. And as Abby and Joshua try to heal from their pasts and Jo Marie dreams of the possible before her, they all realize that life moves in only one direction, forward. So we get this main character, Jo Marie Rose, and she has the Rose, um, the inn at Rose Harbor. It's a bed and breakfast. She used to work in finance in Seattle. And then when her husband died, she chose to completely just go in, an, in a different direction and make this change and one thing there is she has a dream about her her husband when she first um, moves into the inn and he tells her that the inn will be a place of healing which that it really is each book in the five book series brings different characters and those characters are all going through something in their lives you know relationship issues or personal issues or whatever it might be and they all they all find some form of healing during their time at the bed and breakfast. So you get these character studies in each book because you get different guests coming to the inn that you get to know and you get to know their a little bit of their lives and a little bit of their stories and then you see them journey through figuring out how they're going to move forward with what has happened, how they're going to um, if not resolve whatever is troubling them, then at least move through it, figure out how to live with it, etc. There are some romances, of course, involved in these stories. And Jo Marie herself meets a man who is her handyman and is present in all five books. And their relationship develops over time. They're friends. They're not friends. He's sort of grumpy. She's not sure. You know, it's one of those things where they're definitely friends, but she's never sure is there something else there? Is there not something else there? And so we watched, we watched their relationship grow as well and watch them figure out what's going on. He has things in his past that he doesn't want to talk about, but they, of course, eventually come into light and they have to deal with that and f figure out what it means for their friendship, what it means for their relationship moving forward. So the inn really is a place of healing. It's a healing place for Jo Marie because she goes there to um, help deal with her grief over her husband. She, of course, is never going to get over the death of her husband. That, that doesn't doesn't really work that way. You just learn how to continue living and continuing moving forward. So she's not... It's not one of those like, oh, people come here and I'm going to push into their lives and find out what's wrong with them because my inn is a place of healing. No, it's just that people come there and they tend to have experiences that are healing experiences. Sometimes Jo Marie is part of that. Sometimes she has conversations with them and helps kind of walk them through things. But it's not like she's a therapist. It's not like she's, um, I don't even, I don't know. It's, it's She's not intrusive in that. It's just that the inn is kind of this safe haven for a lot of people. And of course, it takes place in this very picturesque small town, and you've got some quirky town characters that are in there, and people that you come to know a little bit that you've probably met, I'm going to assume, from the Cedar Cove series. Again, I haven't read them. I apologize. I cannot speak to those. But you get some of that. And so again, comfort food, this is a really good series, and I believe it is done. It, it says it's a five-book series, and it, it felt 
pretty conclusive at the end of that fifth book. So it's complete if you want to pick it up and have five books all in the same area. And as I was looking, as I was doing a little bit of background reading on this series, I was on Goodreads, which is a book website. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. And there are, it looks like short stories in between each of the longer novels for the Rose, the Inn at Rose Harbor books. So those are listed as, uh, for instance, 0 0.5, 1.5, etc. They're not full novels, they're short stories. I just learned of them as I was doing some reading for this podcast, as I said, so I can't speak to those. But if you want, uh, if you enjoy them and you want a little bit more of that world, then just know that those are available to you. So that is the Rose Harbor series, and we are going to take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be looking at the Blossom Street series by Debbie McComer. Stay tuned, and we will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We have been talking about books by Debbie McComer, author of A Girl's Guide to Moving On, which is what we talked about in the first segment, and then the Rose Harbor series, as well as the Cedar Cove series, which are connected. One is a spinoff of the other. We talked about that in the last segment. And now I want to move on to another one of her series, and that's the Blossom Street series. And I would say that this one is my favorite of the books that she's written or the, the series that she's written. I, as I said, I like all of her books. I find her to be very enjoyable, uh, very comforting to read. I like her characters. I like her storylines. I like that they're um, there's a sweetness to these stories that is is nice. It's just good that they're full of good people. They're full of people who are, you know, struggling with life and trying to work their way through that and forming relationships and figuring things out and working on their communication skills. So they're just very good character develop character studies as well as nice stories that you can slip into and read and know that it's going to be a good story. It's going to have a happy ending. It's going to uh, work itself out. So the Blossom Street series is actually um, a fictional street in the Seattle area, and there are 10 or 11 books in this series. It's a little hard to tell because there are so many characters in these series in this series that s there are some books that are sort of peripherally related. They're not necessarily um, part of the main series, at least, at least as far as I can tell in terms of how to order them. So I would just say if you want to read this series, Google it and see what order comes up. You know, Google Blossom Street book series reading order or something along those lines and then figure it out how you want to read it from there. There are those, some of those peripheral characters that you don't have to necessarily read the whole series. And any of the books you can probably read on their own. You don't have to start with the first one, but I, I like to start with the I like to start at the beginning of things as often as I can. So um, here is a little bit of a description of these stories. And the first one is called The Shop on Blossom Street. And it says The Shop on Blossom Street is owned by Lydia Hoffman. And it represents her dream of a new beginning, a life free from cancer, a life that offers a chance at love. When Lydia starts a knitting class at a good yarn, Jacqueline Donovan 
Carol Gerard, and Alex Townsend join her first class. These four very different women, brought together by the age-old craft of knitting, make unexpected discoveries about themselves and each other. Discoveries that lead to friendship, to laughter, and to dreams. So that is a description of the first book, and kind of like the Rose Harbor series, where the Inn at Rose Harbor is a place of healing, where people come and uh, work through things in their lives, um, Lydia's knitting classes tend to be like that as well. So you get these very diverse groups of people who come to learn to knit for whatever reason, and then they 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 start learning about one another, they start uh, talking, they start sharing parts of their lives with each other, and then so you get to know the, each, these characters in each of the books, but you also get more of Lydia's story, and Lydia's story is throughout these books, so that's kind of nice because no matter which, like like Joe Marie in the other series, Lydia is kind of the main character in these books, but you get to see, you get to meet and interact with all these other characters that come in from her knitting classes. Now, it's a series that is mostly about Blossom Street, but for instance, there is a book called Susanna's Garden, and Susanna's Garden is a flower shop on Blossom Street. So we learn about Susanna, uh, but not not in the context of the knitting class and not in the context of, you know, it's a book about Lydia and her knitting class and then Susanna is in it, but we learn her story and how Susanna's garden comes to be and all of those things. So you get, it's a series, but it's sort of a, it's, uh, instead of a, uh, let's say a series in a straight line, it's kind of like a big blob, <laughs> which again sounds wrong, right? But so it's just kind of, it's all of these books that are interrelated. It's got characters that appear in the series, some, some more than others, uh, some, cross over a little bit and so you just get this great sense of community you get this uh, this street instead of an inn like in the other series this is a street sometimes it takes place on um on uh, in the, the 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 yarn store excuse me sometimes parts of it are in the flower shop there is a young woman who is a baker and so there's some there isn't a book set in the bakery where she works but she is a frequent character that is in and out and we learn about her life through her her life and relationships develop as the series goes on so as I said, there's 10 or 11 books in this series. I'm not sure if they're going to continue. They certainly could uh, for some time to come as we continue getting to know these characters, as we continue uh, watching Lydia and her family uh, as they progress through their, their lives. There is a lot of talk about knitting, but not in like a crazy, you have to know anything about knitting sort of way. It's just what brings the people together. And actually, Joe Marie in the Rose Harbor series knits as well. I believe I have seen that uh, Debbie McComer is a knitter. I'm pretty sure that I've read that in other places that she herself knits. So it makes sense that it shows up in her books. Uh, there is a character, <laughs> this is this is just a personal flight of fancy on my own part, uh, Lydia's sister, who she has a very complicated relationship with, but that's, you know, you'll have to read the books to find out about that. Uh, she actually crochets, so that makes me happy because I have crocheted since I was very young, probably about third grade or so. And while I can knit, I am terrible at it because I've crocheted for so long that the muscle memory just isn't right. <laughs> if I practiced more, I'm sure I could be a better knitter, but because I have crocheted for so long. So, uh, you know, cro you know, people always say, oh, you're knitting. And I'm like, no, it's crochet. You got to know the difference. Okay. That's, there you go. That's my own personal little bit of whatever. So anyway, I'm happy that in the yarn store and in the stories of this yarn work, there is someone who crochets like me. So that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. I just threw that in there for you. Anyway, it's a very good series. I enjoy it. I love the characters. I love, again, that there is a lot of, they, they express their faith in certain ways. They express their um, their journeys together. They experience their journeys together. They are a close-knit group, ha, close-knit of friends, women friends who are, who help support one another, who are there for one another. 
who are exploring their journeys together, etc. So as I said, I very much enjoy Debbie McComer's books. She is my one of my go-to comfort authors. I always know kind of what to expect. I always know that I'm going to enjoy the book. I know that it is going to be a journey into good characters and good stories even if I don't, you know, even if it's, even if one of the books isn't my all-time favorite books of, of just the entire world that, that I'm going to read 900 times, I know that I'm going to like it. I know that I'm going to encounter these characters that I have met before. I'm going to learn more about them. I'm going to walk with them on their journeys, etc. And as just a bit of a background and aside, I saw a bit of an interview as I was preparing for today's podcast and Debbie McComer was talking about how she was dyslexic growing up and didn't learn to read until she was 10. Had a lot of trouble in school because at that time when she was growing up there, you know, they, they didn't have the, they didn't have the terms for dyslexia. They didn't really understand it like we do now. And so she, while she graduated, she was never a great student, but she always knew she wanted to write. So that just makes me like her even more because she has accomplished what she she set out to do even with the difficulties that she experienced and it just makes me appreciate her stories and her storytelling even more so that is my podcast on three of well a book and two series uh, written by debbie mccomer she has lots more i encourage you to check them out she uh she seems to always do a christmas book too which are fun several of her her books i believe have been made into hallmark movies so you can you can watch them after you read the book if that's something that you like to do so Go check out her books and enjoy them as I do, hopefully. That's all the time that we have for today. I want to thank you for joining me as we talked about Debbie McComer's books, The Girl's Guide to Moving On, the Rose Harbor series, and the Blossom Street series. Hope you'll join me again next time when I will be talking about one of my favorite series from childhood, the Betsy Tacy series. I loved them. I will. It's, it'll be a little bit of my love letter to that series, so I hope you'll join me again next week. As always, a reminder, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and any of those apps that you use on your mobile device. So go find us. You can interact with me on social media. Tell me what you like to read. Tell me if you've read the books that I talk about. Tell me what you would like me to read or talk about if there is a favorite author that you would like. I do some author interviews. I have another one coming up in a couple of weeks, author Jason Pellegrino. If there's someone that you like and would like to see interviewed on this podcast, hit me up on social media and just give me your suggestions. I'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Again, I hope you have a great week. I hope you'll join me next week for the Betsy Tacy series. In the meantime, though, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.